Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. Here's our final week, themed week of the month, so if you don't want to miss out on the other videos, the college basics, writing, and literature, go ahead and see my description and those videos below. But today we're talking about assigning multimedia tools for your students to use to create multimedia text. And so in today's video, I'm talking about three tools to share with your students that are all free, and Friday, three assignments to give your students to get them to practice their multimodal media skills. So the first tool is the easiest or the one that creates the easiest type of genres, and that's Canva. And so with Canva, you can create newsletter, ebooks, infographics, basically genres where there's written text, but also visuals as well. And so these are static text versus what I'm getting into next, but it's a free tool and it's easy for students to use because there's templates. So if you, have, you want your students to create infographic, they can look at the templates, pick one they like, and then just you know, customize every single item in that infographic template. If they're creating a newsletter, they can choose a newsletter design they like and then tweak it uh, as well. There's plenty of stock images they can use when creating their text. There's different fonts they can use, different uh, illustrations or elements, shapes, colors. Really, the sky's the limit here. There's so much they can use with this free tool and it can really create some really dynamic genres of multimedia text. So if you're someone who doesn't want to assign a paper, but wants to assign, hey, why don't you create a newsletter about the text that we're reading or about a concept that you're gonna share with the community, for example, for community outreach, or if you might share with a target audience of your choice, and then they can create it using this free tool. So I recommend it. If you haven't used it yourself, I do have link below a tutorial about how to use it when teaching that shows you behind the scenes of using that tool. To give you a sense of what it looks like, here is canva.com. And on the top here, all you have to say is put in infographic and it will show you all the templates on this website. So you click free here and it shows all the free infographic designs. And there are tons depending on, are you going through a process? Are you gonna explain a timeline? Is it something with a lot of stats? So they decide what look they like and then when they click on it, all elements of it can be edited. So they can just make it bigger back here. And then as you click, you can get rid of things that you don't need and change things as needed as well. So for example, if they're winding about global warming, they can make this bigger. They can decide to move it around. They can center it, change the font, and then go down and add what they like. If they wanna add text, if they wanna add photos or elements, it's up to them to decide what they want once it's designed, they just download it and then send it to you for the assignment. Now moving to a bit more advanced, I've taught a writing course where each student created their own free WordPress blog about a topic of their choice. And so they practice their writing skills using that genre. And so WordPress is a free tool you can use to create either a class blog or have each student create their own individual blog. And again, this way, they're writing or creating a, a genre that has text, that has images, but also in this case, they can have videos that they find, right? Uh, GIFs or GIFs, more interactive genres inside of what they're creating. And of course, in this case, you're gonna have to spend some time teaching them how to use the tool, but it is pretty user-friendly, the free version, I would say. And if you want to, you can just create a class one. So you yourself can design the structure of the website and then students can log in and access it because you give them permission to, and they can write blog posts or pages themselves. And so you can decide how do you want to design this class blog. And so I do have a video below about using WordPress in this way so you can get more of an idea about this. But this is a tool, also free, but of course it's a bit more interactive, it takes a bit more time. So you might not be for you, but in case you do want to have a more digital element to your class creations for your students, I do recommend WordPress because it is completely free if you're using WordPress.com. So here's the free website I made with WordPress when I was teaching the course where every student created their own blog. And so they can design it as they'd like. They can add pages or just have the blog itself. So they can just click post here and say, you know, add new. And your students can get a sense of creating a blog post that has not just words in the sense of having a heading and paragraph, but also images and if they want videos as well that they embed or they take from YouTube. So this can be a way of getting them acclimated to multimedia writing as well. Now the last option is a, a movie or a video editing software. 
So if your students have Macs, they can use iMovie for free. Um, Flixier, which is what I use to edit my own videos, it has a free account. And so with a free version, they can create a 10 minute video each month for free. So in this case, it's more if you want like one project where it's a video that they're creating for the end of the semester. Most likely it's less than 10 minutes long. So they can use this tool for free if they want to. Um, but there are other ones as well. So if they have you know, an iPhone or an Android, there are free video editing software that they can use to edit their video down. And so these are two options, but there are others as well. I'll link a few more in case you're curious about those. But again, in this case, it's okay, rather than just having a written element with static images or having a website, actually having them create some kind of video in connection to your course can be a way to gain skills as well that they might find useful later on in their college experience or in their future jobs or hobbies. So that's another tool I would consider if you want to teach multimedia text in your classroom. There are plenty of apps you can use to edit videos. I've only had experience with iMovie and with Flixier. iMovie is available for free if you have a Mac. In this case, I'm on a PC, so I use Flixier.com where you can create and download a 10 minute or up to 10 minutes of video every month for free. And so in this case, basically, again, there is an element of showing students how to use it, but they can also use apps on their phone, for example, to create it or even use Loom, which can be free for students and for teachers, and they can go ahead and screen record or record themselves and do some basic trimming straight on Loom and use that as an editing tool instead. So this can be much more user-friendly using Loom, but of course it's making much simpler videos if they want something more um, complex than something like Flixier or iMovie, or I, there's one that's DaVinci, um, something along those lines, can be used to curate the video for their projects. So these are a bit more advanced than usual, but in case you don't want to go too far into digital tools, I do recommend at least Canva trying that one out because students can use that to create a lot of different genres very simply as can you.